Trent and I are out here in North Dakota, the world of waterfall and walleyes, at least in the month of October. We're going to be fishing bridges, but we're also going to show you a technique that's not used very much in the world of walleyes. It's a pretty cool technique with blade baits. So if you want to learn something new, come watch this show with us and get your next bite. The Dakotas are an abundant and top shelf destination for both hunting and fishing. Oh, there's one. I got a good one, Gary. You got one? I got one. I don't even have a rod out yet. That's adjusting the trolling motor. North Dakota, in particular, offers a unique set of circumstances for fishing walleyes in the fall. Well, you surprised me. You must have just hit, dropped it to the bottom, and there he was, huh? I could jig three times. Whoa! <laughs> Look at that! Oh, that's a nice start! Oh, way to go, buddy! An angler can count on one hand the actual number of bites that involve above-water structure when it comes to targeting walleyes, especially when that structure is man-made. This one I uh, pitched up just a little bit shallower. Yeah. But while the rewards are comprised of catching some of the best, on average, built fish outside of the Great Lakes. He's got to be close. He was just there a second ago. There is more than meets the eye when it comes down to truly capitalizing on this unique bridge fishing pattern. <laughs> what do you mean? That was a great one. I can't rely on you for anything. <laughs> he didn't feel that big when he hit the hook, but he got off right away. I mean, I don't know, too. Oh, he's fat. He is fat. Wow. So he's not, doesn't have a ton of length to him, but look at how fat that fish is. Yeah. Ah, you're using a fire tiger one in this dirty water, huh? Yeah. You sneaky bugger. I broke off that uh, other one I had on a minute ago. Oh, I didn't even hear you. This, this wind, I can't hardly hear what's going on back here. Yeah. Awesome. That's a great fish. All right. Nice job. When we're fishing the bridges here on this ball pattern, the fish tend to school up near the bridges into small active schools of fish that are feeding. So to find them, we'll have one person in the boat vertical jigging and the other person pitching the blade baits. Blade baits have a tendency to like to tangle when you're pitching them. So to combat that, what we do is we use 10 to 15 pound fluorocarbon leader. And this line's a little stiffer and it makes it so it doesn't tangle when you pitch. So what I like to do is I'll just take and pitch the bait out. And you gotta give it just a couple seconds to get down to bottom. Once it hits bottom, go ahead and work it back in slow twitches. You want to feel the blade twitch just two to three times and then let it fall back. The fish will nearly always hit on the fall as it's going back and then you go ahead and set the hook. Once I get back to the boat, what I like to do is work the bait an additional 10-15 times just vertical because sometimes the fish will follow it back into the boat and they'll wait till it's vertical to hit it and it's not moving horizontal anymore. So do yourself a favor, cover some more ground and more water by pitching the blades and not just being vertical all the time. Oh, we got one. Even that? Yeah, it's good. You can come on up here. This is good fish. More than anchor right away. Oh, he throttled it too. Come on, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Look how fat he is. Trent. Yeah, it is. <laughs> the lure popped right out when you net too. You just, boom, gone. <laughs> wow. Oh, come here, you big guy. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chunker. Ooh. Change the little color again. Yeah? That's Which yeah. color did you switch to? Uh, that blue and silver one. Okay. Look how big he is. Yeah. Just, I mean, they're just so chunky. He's This fish here is probably 20 and a half inches is all, but I'll bet he's three and a half pounds. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's just a horse. 
When you're vertical jigging these blade baits, it's actually an action that's quite aggressive. You have to remember when you're jerking up on these, it's kind of like working a crankbait close to bottom. So you want that bait to have a good flutter type action. So I'm going to use an aggressive lift. I like to hold the bait so that it's about an inch above bottom before it touches. I'll hold it there for a second and then I'll lower it to the bottom just for reference. Then I'll rip it again. Another rip about oh, six inches to a foot. And you'll want to vary that amount of lift and the aggressiveness of the lift until the fish tell you what they want. So you don't have to worry about the bites being subtle like with a jig and a minnow. The bites are ferocious, they're fun, and all you got to do is set the hook hard when you feel them. The next bite is brought to you by Mercury, number one on the water. Amsoil, performance for serious adventure. Tracker Boats, fish the finest. Bass Pro Shops, your adventure starts here. Berkeley, catch more fish. And Motor Guide, trolling motors engineered for anglers. Closed captioning for the next bite is provided by PowerPole, the ultimate in shallow water anchors. Although the bridge areas themselves are the starting point for locating high concentrations of walleyes during the late fall months, the heightened current conditions that attract the walleyes to these locations the big old Northerino. Yeah. are also alluring to other predatory species as well. You catch them right along the bridges, they're coming there for the same reason, the current's there washing food by them. Their presence truly highlights not only the difference in where certain types of underwater predators set up to ambush, but how precise of an area groups of fish hold on. I gotta get anchored up here. Hang on, hang on. As they lay in wait for their bait fish of choice. I cast it right up by the seam of the current there. Just caught a glimpse of him, he's right here. I was just moving the boat and the... Should be right around. There he is. Yep, got him. <laughs> Good call, huh? Yeah. <laughs> but it being a lot. Just get that pitched up, uh, up shallow there. Oh, I it worked, it was working it back to the boat and he hit. It seems like where the current's rolling right on that seam is where the walleyes are, where the northerns are kind of back away from the bridge a little further. <laughs> Let's get <laughs> him back to the up again. They're bright color for you today. Yeah, the, that's good. Water's a little cloudy. They like that bright color better than the, uh, than the shiny colors today, it seems like. Yeah, I'm going to stay with the shiny for a little bit, and then I'm going to switch over, I think. Walleye fishing has undergone a lot of advancements the last few years, and probably no more so than in the world of trolling motors. Here while we're jigging around the bridges today is a perfect example. The fish are going to be located in very small pinpoint spots. It really depends on how much current is coming through the bridge on any given day. You have to relocate them constantly. So I have to move around real slowly on the outside of the bridges. Sometimes I'm right in tight underneath the bridge. Sometimes I'm out in the flat. But what I'm searching for are little schools of fish. And when I find a school of fish, myself or one of my partners gets a bite, I'll immediately reach down and put it in that anchor mode. Or perhaps there's a lone fish sitting next to a big boulder and I'll start working that fish. I don't have to worry about my foot control. I can have two feet on the ground and concentrate on fishing. This is unbelievable technology and it's really changed how we fish. Oh, there I got a fish. You got one? Yep. I'll let you know if he feels bigger, which he's kind of starting he to. He looks pretty big. You sure you don't want a net? Uh, yeah, he's feeling a little bigger. We might want a net this one. <laughs> <laughs> he's a little bigger than I was thinking at first. I got her. I just locked her up. You're playing with it. Oh man, I am never trusting you again. That's not a very big one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he came off right away too. Oh. He looks like he had a football for lunch. Oh man, look at, look at that fish. <laughs> now that's a fat one. <laughs> wow, he's not very long. No, he's, he's not. 21 inches or 22 inches, but look right. at the cut on him. Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, let's get him back in the water. That's it. I'm switching colors. I've been a stubborn fool for way too long. <laughs> what, ha what worked a few weeks ago isn't working today. Lesson to be learned. The real
Real Deal, real fishing information from real fishing experts, presented by Amsoil. In walleye fishing, one of the bread and butter techniques is jigging. Now, jigging is a fairly simple technique, so it's got fairly simple tackle, but don't think that you can't give yourself some advantages by picking the right jig for the right situation. First of all, if I'm fishing something like uh, vertical jigging, where my line is going straight down in a river, or maybe I'm doing something like dragging a jig slowly around a piece of structure, and my line is just a little bit of an angle, the jig style I want to pick out is, first of all, a long shank jig. And the reason for that is when I set the hook in those kind of situations, basically I'm setting in an upward direction. And so the hook gap that's going to contact that fish's mouth is anywhere from the point of the jig all the way over here to the eyelet. So if I can open that up, I'm going to get more fish in the boat. When I'm looking at head styles for this kind of jig fishing, what I really like to look at is a semi stand up jig. And what that takes is a little bit of a flattened bottom down here. And what that does is when that jig hits the bottom, the hook is still up off the bottom, the bait is off the bottom. It's just a lot easier for those fish to suck that bait in. And again, I'm going to get a better hook set. Now the other kind of jigging we do a lot of is pitching a jig. Now first of all you'll notice that this is a smaller jig. Typically a 16th or an 8th ounce jig is what we're going to be pitching. So the head is going to be smaller. But what's important to look at here is the style of hook that's on here. Remember when I'm pitching a jig or casting it out and I'm jigging it back, now I'm actually setting the hook kind of horizontally back towards me. So the hook gap that's going to catch the fish is anything from the top of the jig head up to this hook point. So what I want here is a wide gapped hook. Doesn't have to be very long, but it's got to be wide gap, and that's what's going to help contact that fish better. Now, this is a very standard style uh, jig head. A lot of times you'll see that extra little eyelet down there, and most packaging will say that's for some kind of a stinger hook. Typically, I don't use stinger hooks, especially when I'm pitching. You just get it up into too much brush and, and, and snags and things. That extra stinger hook isn't what I want to do, but what I can do is use that second eyelet for something pretty neat, and that is a little flickering blade down there. And what that does is as I'm moving this through the water, the thing just throws off little flashes, little flickers, little shines, little life down there with that jig, and a lot of times that attracts more bites. So look at the situation that you're fishing, where you're basically setting the hook, and pick the right style jig, and it will put more fish in the boat. Oh, Trent. It's a good one. It's a pretty decent fish, yeah. It feels pretty good. You really good. Uh, all right. I'll grab the net. While blade baits themselves are not a new lure, they aren't exactly an old presentation either, especially when it comes to using them in soft water situations for catching walleyes. It's a good bridge fish. I mean, yeah. maybe we'll catch a big one, maybe we won't, but these are definitely above average compared to what's in the lake, what most guys are catching. So, right. Uh, and I think part of that's the blade baits. Yep. The brighter, solid color patterns, such as Fire Tiger, are providing a key advantage as Gary and Trent anchor lock over small shallow spots in the waxing wind where they mark fish just off of a combination of above water and submerged bridge structures. Oh yeah, that's a good there one. We oh. got him. <laughs> nice fish. Nice. Good net job. <laughs> good one. Yeah. I'm away from, I, I kind of moved this away from the bridge as I was finding it. It seems like the GPS is going to keep us away from it. <laughs> it bit right next to the abutment. Wow. Here's a good fish. Nice big fish. Beautiful. These things, you know, they're not like Lake Erie style fish, but when it comes to walleyes, man, this fall right. pattern, it's awesome. How would you like to catch a 31 and a half inch walleye, weighs over 11 pounds, and have it be the biggest fish of a National Walleye Tour World Championship? I just did that, and I did it with a bait that a lot of walleye fishermen don't even use, the little blade bait. I like to use blade baits in the fall. When I'm fishing in water over 10 feet deep, I'll normally use this half ounce size. The reason for that is because I've got a lot of control over this bait. I can feel the bottom immediately when it hits the bottom. I can jerk it six inches a foot and let it go back. It'll fall fast to the bottom and I know exactly where I am. It's a vibrating action. I, I kind of view this as a cross between a jig and a crankbait. When you give a good six inch hop or a foot jerk, it's going to vibrate. It's going to vibrate wildly. You'll feel it go when you lift it up. Same thing if you're pitching and casting them. You'll feel that. So blade baits are kind of the new old thing in the world of walleyes. I'm still going to use a spinning rod, but it's going to be medium to medium heavy. I like using a six to seven foot length, but with a lot of backbone. 
I don't need the tip to be super fast. So remember, if you're gonna do this in the fall around the bridges or any deep structure, you're gonna wanna use a, a rod that's a little different than normal, a little heavier than normal. You wanna use half ounce blade baits. You're gonna work them aggressively and get ready. Hang on, when you get bit, you're gonna have some of the time of your life. Oh, there's a fish. Fish. I you got, got a fish, one? Gary. Yep. Okay, let me reel up quick a little bit. All right, man. Hang on, I got put anchor yet. Okay. It's wrapped up, huh? Ooh, that's a decent fish, boy. Nice. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, pitched right up to that current seam right here in the shallower water. Oh, okay. And he bumped it as soon as I was in there. Yeah. Nice. Oh, let's see if we can get him unhooked here. Yeah, he's a good fish. I think I might need a pliers. Okay. Oh yeah, here they are. Here yeah. you go. All right. He's a nice one, huh? Yeah. So he's right on the edge of that seam when you pitched in? Yeah, he's right on the edge, up shallow, probably only a couple feet of water. Yeah? He hit. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Well, let's get him back and get another one. All right. The next bite is brought to you by Mercury, number one on the water. Amsoil, performance for serious adventure. Tracker boats, fish the finest. Bass Pro Shops, your adventure starts here. Berkeley, catch more fish. Must add, stay sharper, longer. Lowrance, fine, navigate, dominate. Motor Guide Trolling Motors, engineered for anglers. Strike King, legacy of domination for 50 years. And Power Pole, swift, silent, secure. Topics, leading information and tackle and techniques to make you a better angler. Presented by Mercury. So here's one of my favorite plastics for jigging walleyes and it's called the Twitch Tail Minnow. I helped Berkeley design this bait a couple years ago and some of the attributes about the bait or why I helped them develop it is I wanted a minnow style bait that had a tail that never stopped moving no matter how hard you tried. The original designs, we really have colors that match any bait fish out there. And I simply thread the twitch tail minnow all the way up the shaft or the hook all the way to the jig head. And I use this during the cold water periods, your spring, fall, and winter. And I don't fish it as aggressive as I would in the summer. I cast it out, let it go to the bottom, and I use a slow lift and drop, retrieve, all the way back to the boat. This would also be good like in the springtime when you're vertical jigging for walleyes. No matter how hard you keep to try and keep this still, that tail is always moving. And now I want to show you one of my favorite ways to rig the twitch tail minnow. And that's by simply nose hooking. During the summer months, when the water's warm and the fish are real aggressive, what I do is I take the old twitch tail minnows that are chewed up and torn up, and I break them into pieces and I thread them on the shaft of the hook, use it as a body filler. Then I take a brand new twitch tail minnow and I simply nose hook it just like you would live bait. And by doing this, the action of this bait is incredible. When you cast it out, let it sink to the bottom, I use a real aggressive rip. You let it rip up and flutter back down, rip up, flutter back down. And when that bait rips up and starts fluttering, you don't know which direction it's gonna go. Sometimes backwards, sometimes forwards, left, right. So the action on this is, is really incredible in the summer times. So that's the two ways I rig the twitch tail minnow, the tail that never stops moving. The bridge pattern for late fall walleyes in North Dakota can sometimes mean a lot of fishing traffic in some of the more well-known or accessible locations. Just, just so fat and well-fed. Every fish, even when we were here a couple weeks ago, Every fish we caught was like that, yeah. Of course, in a particularly high traffic and snaggy scenario, you never can tell what you might hook into. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I got underwear. <laughs> You're gonna touch it, I'm not. <laughs> you sure you don't want to? No, I do not want to. <laughs> the fall pattern we're fishing is near these bridges, and the bridges have a tendency to concentrate the fish underneath. It also concentrates the anglers, both from the shore as well as from the boats. There's a lot of rock and steel in the water here, and so guys are getting snagged and they're breaking off their lines and their tackle. This is what we caught just today under this bridge. And so we're cleaning this up out of the water and we'll throw that away when we get home. 
But to combat that, what we're gonna do is we use some heavier line. We're using some 14 pound fire line. We're using a 15 pound fluorocarbon leader tied directly to the fire line. And with that, we're able to break off most of the line instead of breaking off our baits when we snag the line on the bottom. Let's not become part of the pile. Let's become part of the solution. I got one, Trent. What do you got? Oh, it's a pretty good fish. I didn't feel the bite real good. You are just there when I lifted, but oh, it's a that. decent one. All right, come on right up here. All right. I got her an anchor, so. Oh yeah, he's a nice one. Ready? Here he comes. Here he comes. Yeah, fatty, fatty. Nice. That <laughs> is a fat one. He is. <laughs> wow. He's just kind of a big old fish, isn't he? Oh, he popped off too. Yeah, here you go. Oh yeah. It's another good one. They're kind of like just beautiful 20 to 22 inch fish with great bodies. It's amazing how just, small the heads are on them compared to the bodies. I mean, yeah, I think that just you know, so much right forage. here in Devil's Lake, this freshwater shrimp is just, they just love to eat it. Right. But you know, this pattern unfolds in a lot of the western reservoirs uh, in the Dakotas and actually a lot of Wisconsin, Minnesota lakes too. Yeah. The bridge pattern does. So. We'll get him back right away. I didn't really feel a sock hit with him. Okay. It's just I kind of held it, and then when I was raising, it was there. There he goes. And he's not even from Wisconsin. He's munching on, on spring cheese. <laughs> that's right. Now, that's addicting. That's that's the way it is. That's what we call defensive fishing. Gary shoves me back in the weeds here, sitting about two feet of water, so I can't catch anything. And he's got the whole front of the boat with the uh, both sides of that river and the bridge frontage out there. And I got nothing to fish. Trent and I are out in the world out in the world, making our way, pioneering. We live in a tent, and there are some times when our snowmobiles won't start. Trent and I have been dodging bullets for the last three days. <laughs> Whoa, <okay. laughs> the next bite would like to thank the Woodland Resort, centrally located on Devil's Lake. The Woodland Resort offers lodging, year-round guided fishing opportunities, as well as boat and ice house rentals. For more information on Woodland Resort, visit woodlandresort.com.